Hey all, it's Dave for Gamers on Games. Um, I'm trying my best to try and back off doing as much political stuff as I have been, but um, let's face it, what's going on right now is it's extremely stress-inducing. That being said, uh, there are folks out there on the internet who are expressing what I am feeling better than I can express for myself. So what follows is an amazing TikTok takedown and I think that she just really knocks it out of the park. That being said, before we get to that, I want to make sure I'm very clear on a single point. I realize history bends towards people who survive assassination attempts getting into office. However, as I'm watching news reports about what the Democrats are doing in light of this attack, especially Joe Biden pulling his advertising, we cannot allow that. That is not an option. Now we need to fight even harder. We need to make sure that history bends towards the way of progress and away from fascism. The Republicans have not changed. They are now just feeling emboldened to be even worse than they were before. The fact that J.D. Vance is now the um, vice president nominee and is going to be his running mate, shows that he is doubling down on his worst elements. Keep in mind, we've already posted just a few of the comments that J.D. Vance has expressed when it comes to Trump. That should be very telling, and should, at least for Trump, have been a disqualifier. However, he realizes that J.D. Vance is going to fall in line like everybody else in the GOP. Everyone is moving in that direction. It is now our duty to make sure the country does not bend to that will. We must do everything in our power through ballots, not bullets, to make sure that Trump does not get a second bite at the uh, government apple. It's now or never. It's do or die. It has to happen now. That being said, please enjoy this TikTok clip. Well, folks, I tried. I really did. I managed to squeeze out some genuine empathy for Orangina, and I thought I did a pretty good job. And then I made the mistake of looking at Elon's ex, and I remembered why the right is not compatible with empathy. And then I remembered Paul Pelosi getting hit over the head with a hammer and mocked by Schlumper and company. I remembered the image of bound, gagged, and hogtied Joe Biden that Schlumper tweeted to the world. I remembered the assassination threats against Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer and how one in six election officials have experienced threats because of their job, ranging from death threats that named officials young children to racist and gendered harassment by the right. I remembered MTG calling for the execution of Barack Obama and Paul Gosar posting an animated video depicting him unaliving AOC. I remembered the far right's violence against minority communities in Charleston, Pittsburgh, El Paso, Buffalo, Jacksonville, etc., etc., etc. I remembered Trump calling for people at his rallies to be harmed and how he wanted to shoot protesters in the legs. And of course, I remembered January 6 and how all our lawmakers' lives were in grave danger and our capital police were pummeled and traumatized for Trump's adrenaline rush of vengeance for a country that kicked him to the curb. I remembered E. Jean and dozens of women who faced violence at Trump's own hands. And then I caught wind of J.D. Vance and all the wannabe up Trump's ass peanut gallery who waited about two and a half seconds before claiming that Joe Biden's campaign rhetoric led directly to President Trump's attempted assassination. And Representative Mike Collins going one step further claiming Biden sent the orders. I remembered lock her up and knock the crap out of them and good people on both sides and when the looting starts the shooting starts and stand back and stand by. And I remembered that between 2013 and 2022, 75% of murders committed by extremists were caused by right-wing extremists, with only 4% caused by left-wing extremists. Of course, I don't advocate, celebrate, or condone violence. That's what the other side does. 
but I draw the line at feeling compassion for a man who we all know would be making a joke about the shooter having poor aim if this had happened to Joe Biden. I'm not going to go down the road with all the conspiracy theorists, although I find it baffling that his security team is so incompetent. And for the life of me, I don't understand how a man who was just shot at was able to stick his head above the Secret Service human shield that was huddled around him right after the shooting so he could fist pump the air and encourage his voters to fight. You'd think the folks who are supposed to be experts at protecting the president's noggin would have been a little uncomfortable with giving the shooter a second chance at blowing it to smithereens. Folks, I think we all know what's in store for us. We're going to see the biggest misuse of martyrdom there ever was. We're going to see mediocre men marinating in victimhood, tossing out thinly veiled calls for retribution and dog whistle after dog whistle for MAGA minions to avenge the radical left. Joe Biden will be painted as a cunning force of evil, at least when he can remember where he is and when to take his Alzheimer's meds. It's going to be torture. Absolute frickin' torture. And instead of talking about the corroborated testimony of young girls who were allegedly violated at the hands of the depraved sociopath who happens to be the Republican nominee, we're going to hear about a cult leader victim who bravely gave the tip of his ear to save racism everywhere. Yeah. Well, all I can say is I'm going to be sure to remember all the folks who feared for their safety because of Orangina Pervilicious Felonia Schlumper McPhee's thin-skinned rhetoric over the years. And I'm going to remind the bad actors that malevolent men don't get to turn victimhood into victory. Mm-hmm. Yeah.